In this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up your Fitbit Inspire 3. So to start, if you don't see anything on your screen, you'll want to press and hold the side buttons until you see the Fitbit logo. And then eventually, five to 10 seconds later, you should see this icon on the screen, as well as this text that says to download the Fitbit mobile app. So if you don't already have the Fitbit app, you'll need to go to the App Store on iPhone or Google Play Store on Android phone. And you'll want to search for Fitbit. And then you go ahead and tap. And this is what the logo icon should look like. And you can tap here. And at least on iOS, if you've never installed this before, it should say install, which you can tap. It might say update if you need to update to the most recent version which I highly recommend you do. Or if you're already on the most recent app version like I am, it'll say open. So whatever it says here, go ahead and tap on it. And for me, I am already logged in. So if you're already logged in, all you have to do is tap on this profile picture on the upper left side of the screen and then you'll tap set up a device. And here we can see Inspire 3 is at the top because it's right at launch time. If you don't see Inspire 3, you may have to update your app, or if it's been a while since Inspire 3 came out, you may have to scroll down in the list of devices. But just so you know what it looks like if you were logged out, I'll go ahead and log out here. And this is the screen if you've never if you're logged out or if you've never had the app before. So if you're, if you never had the app before, you'll go ahead and tap join Fitbit. You'll find Inspire 3 in the list. You'll say set up, and then you'll need to provide your first name, last name, email address, and a password. You'll need to agree to the Fitbit terms of service, which you can tap here in order to read. Although it is a long, as you can see here by the indicator on the right, a long thing to read. Um, you can also opt into their newsletter or you can uncheck this to opt out. And so once you've entered all that information to set up your account, you'll press next. And if you already have an account, you'll just press log in and you'll enter the email address and password associated with your account and then tap log in. So I already have an account, I'll go ahead and log in All right, so I'm back to being logged in again, and I'll go ahead and tap on my icon here, and I'll tap set up a device, and I'll tap Inspire 3. And I'll go ahead and tap set up. And so here it's saying privacy and your Fitbit device, read our privacy policy, which you can tap to read, and you can read everything here. And if you agree to it all, you can tap I agree, which says you must read and accept to continue. So I'll tap I agree. So it's saying let it charge. The pins on the charger must lock securely with the port on the back of your Inspire 3. If your device is charging, you'll see a Fitbit logo or battery percentage on the screen. So in order to connect your device, you'd want to line up these gold charging pins so these two pins on the charger need to be the same direction as this. So here, not here. And then you'll just press it in. And then you just wanna make sure that it's on securely. And then you can plug in this side to any compatible power adapter or power plug. And you'll get that charging. I'm not gonna have mine charging here, but just in case it is recommended to charge yours up before you start this uh, setup process. So I'm gonna go ahead and tap next. So it says it's searching for Inspire 3, turn on your phone's Bluetooth and it already found it. And we already have a set of four digits on our device's display. Now this most likely will be different on your display, although it'd be cool if it's the same. So whatever numbers are there, you'll want to enter onto your phone. So I got 5184, and it says it's connecting to Fitbit. So the tracker is talking to my phone, 
And here we have a little pairing icon that has shown up on the Inspire 3's display. And there's a little buzz and it says pairing is complete. And here on my phone it says Bluetooth pairing request. Inspire 3 would like to pair with your iPhone. So I'll go ahead and tap pair. And now it's saying allow Inspire 3 to receive your iPhone notifications. So when connected, all notifications you receive on your phone will also be sent to Inspire 3 and may be shown on its display. So you can either tap don't allow if you don't want this or allow if you do. I do want to see notifications on my display, so I'm going to tap allow. All right, so here's just kind of an upsell for the uh, Fitbit protection plan. You can skip this if you'd like and tap not now. And here it's saying explore Inspire 3, have fun customizing in the Fitbit app, try popular features like exercise and relax. So we're going to take a look at the clock faces. And yeah, I'll go ahead and tap next because there's not much else new. A lot of this stuff does require premium. Sleep stages and sleep score does not though, but with premium you'll get a slight bit more information. All right, next. All right, so they're saying to try it on. They do recommend wearing your device loosely enough to slide up and down your wrist, but during workouts, try wearing it higher on your wrist for better fit. And I'll go ahead and tap next. And how to change the bands. So I'll go ahead and show you quickly. It has this pin attachment mechanism, so I'll go ahead and pull down on this pin. And you can already see that, that it kind of just slides out like that. I'll do the same on the other side, so I'm going to pull down here and then it'll just slide out. Well, either said than done. There we go. So I had to force it a little bit. And then to put it back in, you'll want to put the side opposite this outer pin, bigger pin, in first. So you'll want this to line up with this side. And then you'll need to press this down while pushing the band toward the tracker. So pressing down and in and release. And then give it a little tug, make sure it's in there securely. So same thing over here. I'm going to put the side opposite the large pin in. Okay, and now I'm going to pull this down while simultaneously pushing it toward the tracker. And it popped out, so there we go. Now it's in secure, pull down and push in, give a little tug. So yeah, even somebody who's had almost every single Fitbit can still have trouble with these pin locking mechanisms. They're not the easiest to use. So that's how you change the bands. And we do have this nice color display for the first time in an Inspire series device. I'll go ahead and tap next. So it says press the buttons to wake your device. You can also firmly double tap the screen or rotate your wrist toward you as if checking the time. To prevent the buttons on your tracker from activating, use the button lock setting. So if you like the buttons, you can use them. If you don't like them, you can disable them. So I'll kind of show you what they're talking about here. Multiple ways to activate your screen. So press the buttons to wake your device. Well, that was the <laughs> rotating my wrist toward me. So if I press the buttons, that screen came on. A pro tip, you can also cover it up to make the screen go dark. So press to activate, cover up to deactivate. It also says I can firmly double tap the screen. So one, two, or I can rotate. So those are the three ways to activate the screen. So I'll go ahead and tap next. Swipe to find the info you need. Swipe left or right for apps like notifications, exercise, timers, and more. So let's see, left or right should give us our apps. 
So yeah, we got notifications, exercise, relax, alarms, timers, and then we're back to the clock face. And then you can do the same thing, swiping from the left to the right, and it'll go in the reverse order. All right, it says swipe up from the clock to see stats. So I'll swipe up here, and you see it has about 35% battery, so that's how you can check your battery percentage also. We have the date with the day of the week, and then here are the stats. So these are steps, distance, active zone minutes, total calories burned. So the reason why you will have a number here already that's actually pretty high is that Fitbit counts all the calories you burn even while you are at rest and they don't separate out your active exercise only calories. So that's why that number is already high. We have uh, hourly activity, current heart rate, resting heart rate, and that's it for now. I think you also see your sleep score after wearing this to sleep. And so a pro tip is when you're on your stats, you can double tap. No, I guess not. So pro tip is actually probably pressing the side buttons then. All right, so when the buttons are enabled at least, you can press the side buttons from your stats to go back to the clock face. And so it says swipe down for quick settings. So I will swipe down. And here we have auto wake. So that just means if you turn that off, the screen will no longer wake with wrist motion. All right, got it. So I'm gonna double press the buttons, cover my hand, turn off the screen. And now if I do that little wrist rotate motion, the screen will not come on, so. That saves battery, but for the most part, I would like to have that on personally, so I'm going to turn that back on. We also have do not disturb mode, which is currently off. So when you enable this, it doesn't tell you, but you won't receive notifications or hourly step reminders, things like that. So if you don't wanna be disturbed because you have a meeting or you're recording a video, for example, um, you could turn that on. But for the most part, I'll go ahead and leave this off. There is also a sleep mode. So if you turn that on, it'll kind of do the same thing as do not disturb in terms of preventing notifications from waking you up. I think it also displays the, or dims the screen slightly. It's kind of hard to tell, so. I don't know, I'll have to double check what exactly that all does, but that's how you turn sleep mode on or off. And we have a find phone, so that's interesting. I wonder if my phone will beep. So I have do not disturb on, let me cancel this. I take to not disturb off on my phone. Go away. <laughs> I'm curious. So it looks like it's connecting to my phone. But I don't hear anything. So again, I'll have to look into this feature. Doesn't seem to be working right now. Um, worn on wrist. So if you're wearing this on your wrist, you'll want this to say worn on wrist. You will tap it here. It says clip on body instead. Heart rate, sleep score, and other features won't be available. So you can either say yes or no. I'll go ahead and say yes. And so this will be if you have the clip accessory. And this will essentially turn off heart rate. So if you don't have heart rate working, you might want to check this setting because most likely it somehow got turned on. So you'll want this to be wear on wrist where all features will be available. So I'll say yes. And then we have a water lock. So if you're gonna go swimming and you don't want your swimming motion to activate the buttons, you can turn that on. I believe that's the only thing that it does. 
says to lock firmly double tap. That is a firm double tap. So now it's locked. And it tells you here that it is water locked. To unlock firmly double tap. That is a firm double tap that it takes. Now it's unlocked. All right, what else do we have? So now we have the settings. So I'll go over the settings in another video. But I'm going to turn back here for now and continue on with this. So let's say next. So swipe from left to right to reach the previous screen. Tip, press the buttons to quickly return to the clock. So I kind of showed that how if you're somewhere on the stats, you can just press the buttons and it'll go back to the clock face. All right, next. So some wear and care, care tips. Clean your band and wrist regularly with a soap-free cleanser. I personally use Cetaphil and it works great. If your device gets wet, remove and dry completely after your activity and do take your device off from time to time. So I'll go ahead and tap next. It says all set, now get moving and make every moment count. So you can either tap to learn more about Inspire 3, although you can get to this later in your app as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and tap done. So here it's talking about premium. Your Inspire 3 comes with six months of a premium membership. So if you want to go ahead and start that, you can do that now or you can do it later. I'll show you how to do that in a different video. So I'm gonna go ahead and tap on this X in the corner here. And here we have a prompt on iPhone. It says location access and Bluetooth sharing. Set allow location access to always to track your exercise with GPS. Turn on Bluetooth sharing to start a GPS exercise from your tracker. So the Inspire 3 does not have built-in GPS, but it does have what's called connected GPS, which means if you have your phone out with you on an exercise that you want to track, you can use your phone's GPS to get that GPS track. So if you want to do that, I'll go ahead and tap open settings and show you what that looks like. So here we have Fitbit location. So right now it says while using. So you can either set this to always, and you can also have precise location on or off if you want your GPS track to be super precise. Or if you don't want to ever have the GPS functionality enabled, you can also tap never. So whatever you prefer there, that's what you can choose. I'll go ahead and tap here to go back to the Fitbit app. And I'll tap here to see Inspire 3. It says it's syncing apps. So we have a wrist setting here, so you can put it on your, tell Fitbit it's on your dominant or non-dominant wrist. There are some notification settings here. We can turn on or off call notifications, text messages notifications, calendar event notifications, and then you can tap here to go on to individual app notifications. Now this apps will only show up after you start getting notifications after you set up your device, and then you'll see the on off toggles here for each individual app. Here we do have high and low heart rate notifications. So you can have these on or off and you can also customize the threshold. We have 100 to 140 for high heart rate or 40 to 60 for low heart rate. We do have reminders to move, which you can turn on or off and also change the start, end time, or days. Do note that it can only be anywhere from 5 to 14 consecutive hours in the day, and it cannot go past midnight, unfortunately, if you're a night shift worker. You can also change your main goal here from steps to distance, calories burned, or active zone minutes. And this is the goal that Inspire 3 will show a celebration once you achieve it. And here we have exercise shortcuts. So if you need to change your exercise, you'll need to remove one of the above activities. So in order to do that, you can, for example, swipe to the left and hit delete. And now it says plus exercise shortcut. I can select one more activity. I can delete another one and another one. And let's click here. So we have tennis, interval, Pilates, hike. 
circuit training, spinning, run, swim, boot camp, kip, kickboxing, treadmill, yoga, stair climber, weights, golf, outdoor workout, elliptical, and martial arts. So not a ton of options there, but you can also tap edit and change these like hike can go higher, maybe general workout will go lower, and spinning go above, bike, and then you can tap done. Then I can tap over here. Still says syncing apps. So this is the how to use. If you tap here, this is what you would have gotten to if you had clicked to learn more about Inspire 3 at the end of the setup. So it kind of goes through some more information on how to use your Inspire 3. And something you probably all want to see is the gallery of clock faces. So it says, continue installing. Some applications did not finish installing. Do you want to continue installing them now? Yes, continue. So I'm not sure what apps it's talking about at the moment, but right now, looks like maybe the settings app didn't finish. So this does have SPO2. And otherwise, there's nothing super exciting in the apps here. It's not like the smartwatches where there are way more app options. Okay, so let's go to the clocks here. So as of the release date, these are the available clock faces. They look very similar to the Lux clock faces. So I'm guessing this is the same display as the Lux. Again, not the best selection here, especially if you don't want anything too crazy, like all this overlapping and fuzzy stuff. So I don't even remember which one I like. Not even sure the one I like is here anymore, but is what it is. So I guess I will keep it there. One thing to note is Let's see if you can change there. So more color options are available in the clock face settings. So I can tap here on settings. So these are the three themes. So let's say I go with the purple theme and I can go back and I'm not sure if that changed. Supposedly did, so I probably need to sync. So I'll keep going back. And it is syncing, and after it syncs, it should change my watch face to the purple theme, so we'll see. So I don't know if it synced before or not, but my watch face is actually showing the purple theme there, so. That does look kind of nice, so I don't think you can change the color on every single watch face, but that one you can, but you only have three color colors to choose from. So anyway, that's a pretty detailed guide on how to set up and customize your Fitbit Inspire 3. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, if you enjoyed this video, if you could give it a thumbs up down below as it really helps this video and my channel, and consider subscribing if you want to see more Fitbit Inspire 3 and other Fitbit and wearable videos. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.